we're gonna get going. I think I might have figured something out. So, I'm setting the camera up here to show you back towards the mill. Don't mind the mess, the mill takes up too much room in my shop. But you'll get to see the hydraulics running from where you're at and me operating the controls on the other side as well as a couple other things. So let's do this. I think I may have figured something out. Let's find out if I have. Now we're gonna start running things. I think that's hydraulic fluid. Oh. All right, yeah, oh yeah. I've got a leak here, folks. All right, I think I, I think I've figured out what's going on, folks. One, right down here, I've got some hydraulic lines that are crossing each other. One of those, it's pretty twisted up. And I have a feeling it's kind of worn enough that maybe that's where that leak's coming from. There's a leak right here on this end of the mill that I never noticed before. Of course, it's always sitting outside. It's got dirt, it's got other things underneath it. A little class one leak I might never notice. So I've got a leak here. That explains why my hydraulic fluid level in my hydraulic tank dropped all of a sudden and, and I noticed it this fall when I went to check it and to go ahead and, and change out the fluids and the filter. So that's number one. This is a triple layer issue here, folks. <laughs> you know, in the troubleshooting world, when you're troubleshooting and you have one problem, that's usually not too hard to find. When you have two, it gets a little more complex because you gotta solve one before you can solve the other usually, and they don't always solve each other. If you have three, boy, that really throws you a loop. It becomes difficult. So I will say, number one, getting the mill into the shop, even though this shop wasn't designed to have a mill in it, barely has enough room for me to get the tongue past the door. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> close. But I got it in the shop and I got it onto a bare concrete floor that's clean. It's a little dirty right now, but it was clean. I could see those class one drips then. I didn't even notice it. It's been in here for a month, maybe longer. Finally, I noticed probably because I was running it a lot and taking the pressure off and on and all that stuff. But I noticed a leak right over here that I had never noticed before. And now that I see it and I got under there, I could see it, that it's been leaking for a while. It's obviously, it must have started sometime in the summer. I didn't notice it. And mills get dirty, folks. They get real dirty. So obviously it got dirty and I didn't see it. And there's hydraulic fluid that had been gathering on the axle and on the, the frame crossbar here that the axle's mounted to. So now, clean environment, I get into there and holy cow, I've got a leak down here. That's actually problem number three though, so I'm going backwards. Problem number two, I believe that the cap on the hydraulic reservoir is plugged. Why? Well, I was having this problem. I hit the hydraulics, hydraulics weren't working, and it was acting really weird. I changed out the fluids and I did notice a little seepage pass that I thought, oh, maybe I got it a little full or something like that. Never solved the hydraulic problem. It was still an issue. And it wasn't until last night, thanks to the guys on Forestry Forum, one in particular, Fluid Power Pro, thank you so much. I think you may have solved the problem. He said, look, your hydraulic motor sounds like it's overloaded. It's, it's got too much pressure already. Something is wrong. So I took the cap off, and when I took the cap off, it's a two-piece cap. The top popped off at the bottom. It's got a little sponge in it to keep debris from coming in past the valve. The valve actually is a vent. So that vent valve, if it doesn't have that in there, you can get crud inside your hydraulic fluid, that would be bad. Yeah, you got a filter, but you just don't want crud going straight into the tank and then into your hydraulics. So I think that was plugged because after I took it apart and I, and I just left it off and I started running the hydraulics, the first thing that happened is I dumped a bunch of hydraulic fluid out. <laughs> I'll show you right here. And that's because when I filled up my hydraulics, my 
all of my hydraulic components were pretty much at their extended reach. And something I hadn't thought of, and the guys on Forestry Forum pointed this out, if you, if you fill your hydraulics with everything all the way out, guess what? You're putting a lot of hydraulic fluid in there. You're running the hydraulics, you get it all in there, it's pumped in there, and then you try to close those hydraulics, well now you've got an overpressure situation. Fluid's gotta go somewhere. When that cap was on, I got a feeling it may have been coming out down here. We're gonna find out. But it was also coming out at the hydraulic tank. With the cap off, it just kind of spurted out, flooded out. Okay, when I was running it with the cap off, guess what? It seemed like it ran closer to normal. Very strange. Later, I put the cap back on because I thought, okay, I've kind of cleaned it out a little bit. I don't know, let's just see if it makes a difference. I put the cap back on and <laughs> the hydraulics wasn't working. So I thought, okay, I'm done for the night. Went inside, came out this morning, took the cap off, ran the hydraulics, and after a brief period where things kind of had to get, I guess, get warmed up, guess what? The hydraulics started working normally. I would say maybe 99%, pretty normal. Okay, so the old brain working here says, if you did this and it improved things, it's probably one of the problems, one of the main problems. Now the only issue I had past that point was my battery was getting drained because even though I had it on a battery charger, battery charger even at 10 amps isn't enough to keep up with this hydraulic pump. So, and I don't wanna, I don't wanna run a motor in here, I'll smoke myself out. So I decided to go ahead and just cut it off, stop, give it a minute, let the battery charge up a little bit more and then run it again. But in the meantime, I decided to clean some things up and then I noticed the drips here. The rest is history, folks. And by the way, number one was on the head. There's a little brass slash copper block. It's on the head and the head rides back and forth. When, when you wanna be able to run your hydraulics, the, the head has to be at the tongue end of the mill where that, where that power bar is. Those have to touch. Well, mine had been getting worn out. They do, in five, six, 700 hours, they start to get worn out. So you gotta replace them. No problem. I got a new one in and I replaced it and I think I've solved that issue. James over at Wood Miser and Wood Village asked me to tell you this. When you put those new blocks on, they've got a, they've got a bracket that, they, that everything mounts to, right? And that mounts onto the orange head of the mill. It's black bracket, orange head. Those have to be lined up nice and square. You want that bracket square so that that little uh, brass copper block, which has some springs, it's got like plungers on it, you want that to hit that copper power bar flush, flat against it. You don't want it to tilt left or right or up or down. So you wanna have everything nice and square so that the springs will push it square into that block. Everything seems to be working good. I just need to get this battery charged up and I may even open the door and run the motor in here and just see what happens. So give me a minute, let me see what happens. Let's start her up. My leak is right here. You see that's coming off. Oh, look at that. So, I'm thinking something's come loose right here. Maybe a connection or somehow it's got a hole or something. I don't know, but that's leaking. So we've got a leak there. So I'm gonna have to figure out where that leak is. <sighs> so it's possible I can just tighten this up, but you know, it shouldn't do that. that it shouldn't do that. I don't know why it would leak. So that's a little odd. I could try to tighten it up, see if that works. But my guess is that might have to come apart. So I need to put my charger back on the battery. I need to let that go. Rest of today, I think, and just give it a good, you know, 24 hour charge and then come back out with a full battery, check my leaks and then look at you know, I don't know, I might just tighten them down. But um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna confer with some folks first and then kind of get an idea what they think. And then we'll go from there. But I will say that when I took the cap off, hydraulics ran better. There was one period where they kind of started to lag again a little bit, not sure why. Hopefully can come back in here tomorrow, fix these last couple things. If I can't get it fixed, Guess what? There's a hydraulic shop down the way. I can point it out to them. Hey, I got a leak here. This is what it's doing. Things were working better once I did this and maybe they can help me solve it. So, all right, so I'm gonna do that now and it's gonna be like this. All 
All right, folks. Sawmill's not in here anymore. And here's the mill. There she is in all her, all her glory. And look, what do you see? See that? Shiny new fender. <laughs> I had to do it, folks. I just had to do it. All right, there she is. It's going to need some work. So get it into the shop to get my hydraulics sorted. Unfortunately, I can't show you how I'm going to fix them because I'm not going to fix them. <laughs> Got to that point, but all right, folks. <laughs> I think I think we've got it. So one last leak to fix. I'm going to get to it right now. Stick with me. Let's get her done. All right, this little guy, it's basically a two way valve. I think they call it a sequencing valve or something like that. So I got to put this on. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Okay. All right, folks. Ugh. How much fun down here? <sighs> nice. That wasn't the plan. <clears throat> Too late. Uh, I'm expecting that. No pressure on it now. <sighs> All right, now that I've averted a natural disaster. Holy cow. I didn't expect that, and I guess I should have. You know, I, I use shops once in a while to get things done that I can't do myself because I'm just busy. And I tell you what, I paid that price here. It's a tricky spot, folks. Kind of doing it <laughs> upside down, right side up, right and wrong and around in every other direction. Oh, there we go. All right, so let's see if we can this guy to go back on this guy back on all right i think i've got some hydraulic fluid on my glasses definitely got some on my hands Ooh, my shirt i didn't get very much on the ground thankfully i caught it with the uh, cardboard i had down there <laughs> you know i just wasn't thinking that i had everything up to it's you know, pushed up all the way which meant there's a little pressure on that. So when I popped off that line, she just spurted like an artery. <laughs> Not good, but guess what? We got it fixed. Two sequencing valves, one pump motor, one contact block, well, a filter, oil, and a cap. But you know what? We got it fixed. We really just had those three problems. The contact, that block was bad. It was just, you know, uh, it was just worn out. It was working but it was something I needed to fix, so I got it fixed. The pump motor was the real problem. That was bad. I think it's just got a bad set of brushes. We're gonna find out. And two sequencing valves. One of them maybe was already cracked or it was leaking anyway. And then the shop I had to do the pump, tried to tighten it up. It cracked that valve. The other one started leaking. I suspect they did the same thing. I'm not gonna blame them for it. I'll be honest with you. I might've done the exact same thing. So note to you, and me, don't over tighten the fittings that go into those sequencing valves. If you do, those valves are hollow aluminum. They will crack. And when they crack, they leak. You got to replace them. I think with shipping, it cost me 90 bucks each valve. First one, then the other. Had I just got them both at the same time, maybe the shipping would have been a little less. But uh, I think the pump motor was about $280. I got a spare pump motor now. Once I replace the bushes, that I also bought. I think those were 70 bucks or something like that. They weren't very expensive. I'm gonna drop down below what they were, maybe 25 or 30 bucks. So right down here, right now, I'll put it there. So we got it fixed. Now I'm going milling. I haven't actually put anything on the mill in months now. So it's time to get to it. And I don't know if you can see it, but on a mill, there's a new laser and I still need to adjust it. That's why you haven't seen that video. I know some of you are waiting for that laser video and Apinex, I'm sure they're waiting. Thank you Apinex for your patience. <laughs> it's been a crazy year and Apinex sent me that laser back at the end of the fall, beginning of winter and I expected to get that on and get it done and then we ran into, well, winter for one and, and I don't normally put my mill in the shop but if you saw, I ended up having to put it in the shop and then I had hydraulic problems that I had to get fixed and I've got some back trouble 
took me a little longer. I'm sorry, I'm a busted up old jar head. But anyway, folks, wind's picking up. I gotta get going, I gotta go milling. So y'all have a great day, there's a lot more coming. I appreciate you being here. And do me a favor, hit that like button. I really appreciate it if you do. And if you're not subscribed now, I hope I've earned your subscription today. Y'all have a great day, y'all jar head out.